Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan Anthony Hernandez, and I'm the host of the podcast, The Truth That Heals. Let me fix this real quick. Okay, Happy New Year's, everyone. I'm sobered up. Uh, I hope I didn't. Uh, I hope my are my eyes aren't too red. Uh, I had a fantastic evening, and I hope you all did as well. Uh, celebrating the new year, and to celebrate the new year, I thought, you know what? Let's do a podcast episode. It's been a while since I've you know done this uh, a solo episode, but I wanted to do this because I think it's time that I answer a very simple question. And that question that I get asked frequently is what is the name of the cult that you were in? And that is such a complicated question to answer. Even as an ex member, it's very complicated because there's just there are just so many different faces. There are the faces that Father Bing, the founder, wanted people to see. And one of those faces was uh the six institutes. He made six groups. Outside of the AFI, he made six groups. Uh, the Oath, Lim, Sith, Koth, CPH, and Smith. Try to remember, uh, memorize that. But he made these six groups, and I'm going to, you know, butcher the history. But what happened was the Vatican got involved. And once the Vatican got involved, I feel like they freed us from slavery. They freed us and... Instead of having to follow Father Bing, we had that freedom to to live a re re religious life. Unfortunately, I left uh, right before the Vatican had really fully influenced our group. But by the time I was leaving, I could see things were were getting shaken up. Where you know before that, uh, when Father Bing had his loyalists in charge we had to live in paranoia of the end times we had to live in paranoia of this us versus them mentality either from uh people in the world uh politicians freemasons illuminati we were afraid of other priests and bishops uh then there is the, uh, like I think I mentioned already, the Freemasons, Illuminati. Uh, then we had this fear that there were spies outside of our facilities trying to, I guess, infiltrate. I'm not sure, but we were paranoid. And then with the sisters, I remember that Father Bing would mention how they were, when the end time comes, you know, when all these nuclear wars are going to happen, there's going to be looting. And the first thing everyone's going to want to do is to uh, infiltrate our compounds and just violate all the sisters, which is, of course, that's going to scare the hell out of members. And, you know, you we have this complete trust in Father Bing. But then, you know, over the years, you start kind of using your your thinking and you know, once I started to use my own judgment, I felt that I was being lied to. But because you're so secluded from the world, from the news, from speaking freely, because if you speak freely, uh, well, what happened to me was I got punished, you get beaten, you get put in solitary confinement, because that's one of the tactics that they would use at the time to put fear. So going back to the history, then the Vatican gets involved. And once the Vatican got involved, I saw that Father Bing's paranoia started kind of dwindling. But there were some members from the Oath. Oath was the group that I was in at the time. There were some members of the Oath who were like, no way, you know, the Vatican, my gosh, they're trying, the Vatican is trying to make us sleep for at least six, seven hours, eight hours, whatever. I don't know. It's like, man, they're, 
they are they're evil they're trying to destroy us so this this was the mentality these were the thoughts the discussions that we were having because i remember that at that time uh we were sleeping from 9 or 10 p.m. and our rising was at 12:45 and you're expected to do this every day and you have to stay awake for the whole day naps is very was very frowned upon so i i remember one of the first things that uh the group the the visitation group from the vatican one of the first things that was done was allowing members to sleep and already there were discussions about how uh you know all that us versus them mentality that father being had taught us you know it just rose up and it became like a discussion it's like hey we can't we can't be sleeping for all those hours we're supposed to be victim souls victim soul is a word that you know father being uses which it's it's very confusing let's just say because victim soul the idea is jesus suffered jesus carried his cross therefore us as christians we must carry our cross we must be willing to suffer for christ however they twisted this mentality this theology whatever you want to call it and they use it as as gaslighting pretty much so they make they make you they program me to think that any suffering that happens is the will of god so if the vatican comes and says hey we want you to sleep normally then therefore they are going against suffering if they are going against suffering then they're against the cross if you're against the cross then you're against christ so bottom line is father being trained us we were programmed to seek suffering, to seek hardships. And that is why it is so hard for, for the members from the six institutes, at least back then, to, to be able to leave. Because the way they taught it, or at least Father Bing, the founder, was that if you leave, you're leaving the cross. You're leaving Christ. So then you have this Vatican uh, visitation and it's like okay we want you to sleep and then there's all these discussions so what what happened was bottom line was there was a split in the group and I think that that's where the cult f is in full bloom because you have members like me I didn't want to be in a cult I wanted to leave in 2012 or t I believe in 2012 is when I wanted to leave. And they're like, sorry, but you can't leave. That's the, the part that says you can't leave. That's the culty side. In other religious communities within Catholicism, it should be. It should be that if you want to leave, you know, we wish you good luck, farewell, have a good, have a good life. We wish you the best. Plain and simple. But with Father Bing, with his group, it was, if you want to leave, you're going to be cursed. You're going to be infested by demons. And so it was a very culty mentality where you're not really free to leave. So anyways, so once the Vatican, you know, started, I guess, communicating with our group, um, members of the Oath Lim Smith decided to to go with it we're going to follow what rome is telling us because this seems to be a lot healthier and what father bing is doing is bonkers and so i know a lot of supporters are gonna get pissed off but hey it's bonkers it's crazy uh i'm not saying father bing is crazy i'm not saying that but i'm saying the sleep deprivation the paranoia it was it was a little out there, okay? So then Vatican gets involved, and Oath Lim uh, Smith decide, okay, we're gonna we're gonna follow this. Uh, the Sith, however, and some of the Oath 
from what I understand, it's like, you know what? We're not going to, we're not going to follow this. Instead, we're going to follow Father Bing. And so it's, so for me, it's like, I, I was, I joined a religious group and I saw it developing into a cult. And then the Vatican came and like kind of woke us up by allowing us to sleep. I think that was like the start it was like allowing us to get some normal sleep. And it was like torture because inside, inside of my mind and heart, it's like, I, I shouldn't be sleeping all these hours. You know, wow. They're, they're telling us we should, we should wake up at 5. AM. That's it was, it was for me like a huge sin, but then it's like, I'm confused because it's like, Hey, I'm Catholic. And you know, uh, people from other cults, uh, maybe they won't be able to really, this won't resonate with them. But hey, I, I hope that my, me sharing my story, I hope that it helps someone. And if someone has questions, I hope that it gives some clarity. Because for the longest time, there was no clarity. But once the Vatican started getting involved, I started seeing, I think we all started seeing that there was this fraud happening with father bing and i say fraud because for the longest time you see him as a saint as a holy person but once the vatican was like all right uh father bing is no longer in charge of the oath and of all these groups uh what we saw what i saw was that instead of father bing you know still being faithful instead of him you know, being behind it. He left us. He left those groups to make, I guess, another group, another movement. I don't know, because this is the thing with cults. They can change their names a lot. Like, uh, for instance, uh, my last uh, podcast interview was with author and survivor uh, Daniela Messenek young And she was in this movement called children of god now i believe their name is the family international which is so spooky for me because the name of the movement that father bing has created is the alliance of the holy family international now the afi alliance of the holy family international is not culty per se because what it is what it does is it has the missionaries of father bing like let's say the Sith, uh, or back then when we were still all together before we split up, uh, when we were together, it'd have the oath, like it would be me. And I would go and I would talk to the lay people. The lay people are people who are not studying to be priests or nuns, just people who are Catholic. So you go to them and you pretty much pray with them. But at the end of praying with them, and it was very, like I said, there's nothing culty there. But at the end of that, you invite them to retreats that Father Bing has has ready. And these retreats are set up by Father Bing and by the Sith. And I'm not saying that all the Sith are bad. Um, there are some awesome people there. And I wish that they get the hell out of there, honestly. Because if they're still under Agnes Frias, uh, they should be careful. Because, I mean, she was a mean person to me. And I... <laughs> I hope that they get away from her. But so you invite these people to go to these retreats and what happens at these retreats? I guess you could say it's like brainwashing, uh, fear tactics. Um, it, it could be that. Hopefully they're just praying with the people, which, you know, go ahead. If you want to say some prayers, knock yourself out. Uh, I'm all open for prayer. If you want to read your Bible, go ahead, read your Bible. But what happens is that they bring on these conspiracy theories. They mix up the message with um, paranoia, like I said, uh, the end times. And the message is that Father Bing holds the truth. And so come on and join us. Join the AFI. Join our group of elites and give us your money. And you will be uh, one of the lucky ones who will not suffer. And, you know, so... This message, you know, they take on this Catholic message, but then they steer it 
instead of you know following you know the the Catholic route of you know uh, the sacraments of of being a good person, instead of you know preaching you know being a good person, they preach more on censoring it on Father Bing as the main preacher. He's the only one who should be preaching. And everyone is against us. So it builds up this us versus them mentality. But those who join the AFI, uh, those are the people who join AFI are mostly lay people who give their money, who give their support. But AFI members, uh, those lay people, they are not the ones studying to be priests or nuns other father B, under Father Bing. So back before the Vatican split us up, what I saw was that inside it was culty as as heck because you know you have silencing of the members, beatings, you have uh, a lot of gaslighting, uh, manipulation, fraud, fraud, and you, you can also even say trafficking because I and there are cases of many members who wanted to leave. And it's like, no, you can't leave. You have to go where we send you because that's where God wants you. So they're, they're lying to us. They're, they sent me to the Philippines and I'm expected to call my family. And the idea is I call my family so that my family can send money. So it's like almost a ransom, but I'm trained to just be, hi mom, I'm doing great. I'm so happy here. Oh, you know, we're, but we're we're going through hardship. We have no food. Uh, we're low on supplies. Can you send money? And so money comes, and where does that money go? I'm, I don't know. And I think that's something that needs to be brought to attention because, you know, people in the AFI, they give their donations, give their money. And uh, I'll give you an example. One time, I went to go buy a coffee and there was a spy in my group. And what happened was I got an ass beating uh, with belts from a few members for violating uh, poverty, supposedly, by buying a freaking cup of coffee. Because I, I had nothing else. I mean, I, I needed something to eat and drink. And what did I eat? Because, uh, you know, there are those apologetics, you know, cult apologetics, apologists who are like, well, you, you must have broken something. They beat you for probably a good reason. You must have ate, eaten some kind of buffet. The truth is, I went to McDonald's <laughs> in the Philippines, and I bought myself an apple pie, those small ones that are like probably a dollar in America. I bought me one of those and a, a cup of coffee, no sugar, no cream, and that was it. And a spy reported to me, and then... After that report, I get in trouble for using the money. And the thing is that our parents, those who, you know, my parents are, you know, my dad has passed on, but my mom, she was an AFI member, supposedly. And, you know, they're expected to give money because they want to support their kids who are there. So this is, the, this is how it works. They will recruit members, af, you know, in these AFI retreats with the Sith and all of us back in the early 2000s. We have these retreats and then Father Bing would go up on stage or Father John Santos at, the time, at that time. And it's like, God is calling you, come on and join. And you have this like super high and you, you join this movement. Then they send you to the Philippines where you disappear and they show families, you know, pictures of, Look at all these buildings that we're making. We're constructing all of these buildings. And look at all the members we have recruited. But we need your money to help us out. So who can they recruit? Uh, they, they're going to recruit the youth. They're going to recruit those who are not married, uh, who have no kids, to join uh, one of those institutes. Because once you're there... You know, they give you these vows of obedience and and then they make it hard for you to leave like they did me because I said I wanted I wanted to leave like around 2012 when I told them, hey, I'm I need to get out of here. 
And the message I got was, well, you took vows of obedience, so you got to do what we tell you. So it is like extortion or trafficking. I don't know. But I think that maybe it was. Was I being trafficked? I, I And I'm sharing my own healing journey as we go along and because I think that other members, other ex-members might have asked questions, these very same questions, but there's no one to really give the answers. And then uh, lastly, you know, because I mentioned that they're separate, you know, the six institutes and the AFI, they're separate, but they're kind of together. So it's weird. Um, but the Vatican got involved and the ones who stuck out with Father Bing, from what I understand, are the Sith. Actually, it's pretty much Agnes. And from what I understand, you know, being the bully that she was with me, I wouldn't be surprised if other members were like scared and they're like, okay, we're going to follow her because she's telling us to. And so instead of following what the Vatican, uh, you know, wanted, uh, they're following Father Bing. And to be under Father Bing and to be under Agnes Freyas, I have a lot of fear for those members in the Sith. I wish them the best, but hey, there's just so much brainwashing and manipulation. And I kind of wonder, are they really there on their free will? Or have they just been trained or have they been punished because you know when when i was there i was trained to to be on my happy my happy mood all the time always be smiling call home with a cheerful you know and be like hey mom i'm doing good make sure that they don't worry because the idea is you want them to support father being you want Father Bing to look good and you want people to keep on donating money. That's it. They want the money. So unfortunately, I think it started off like a religious group, but then Father Bing and his, I don't know if he had visions or uh, I, don't, I don't know how he planned it out, but all this paranoia just went full. It went full out. And today... I give a lot of props to the oath, the limb, uh, the the CPH, and the Smith, these six institutes, because instead of following Father Bing in that road of deception and of manipulation, they said, you know what, we're going to break away from this because it is toxic. We're going to allow our members to sleep. We're going to start allowing members to eat we're going to start allowing members to visit their families we're going to start allowing members to discern whether they want to stay here or whether they want to go freely and we're not going to demonize them unfortunately the sith of today i believe that the members are in great danger because you know, if in my time we had so much paranoia, it's happening now. It's got, it's, it's part of, it's part of their identity to have the us versus them mentality. And I hope that they open their eyes, but it's the superiors. So, so this is what happened. Uh, Vatican gets involved says, hey, you can sleep normally now. You can eat normally now. And in these six institutes, originally, Father Bing had placed his most loyal member as a superior for each group. So for the Sith, you have Agnes Frias. For the Oath, you had, at the time, Father Francis. And then for the other groups, I, I can't remember their names, and I don't want to get into that. Uh, so you have Agnes Frias, and then you have Father Bing for the oath. So what, what the Vatican did, from my understanding, was, okay, 
those six superiors that Father Bing put in charge, what we're going to do is we're going to remove them swiftly. You are no longer in charge. Instead of having the most loyal members of Father Bing, the Vatican chose three members to be uh, the OIC, the ones in charge. So instead of only Father Francis being the superior, the one in charge for the oath, he would put uh, three other people so that this group isn't being uh, formed in a culty kind of mentality. But from what I understand uh, through discussions with people is that with the Sith, with the Sith and with some of the oath, they chose not to follow the ones in charge. So instead of following uh, the Vatican, they chose to stick it out with Father Bing. So so Vatican comes and the Sith, let's stick with the Sith. The Sith had the opportunity to continue uh, as a a better religious community, a true religious community, but because they were still under Mother Agnes. So even though the Vatican took out Mother Agnes as the one in charge, I feel that uh, the, the Vatican did put three people. I'm not going to mention their names, but the sisters who were around, they were scared as hell because of the fear mongering that Agnes Frias brought upon. And so instead of, of being free, instead of breaking from that, they chose to father they chose to follow Agnes. And that's why people think, oh, Agnes is the one in charge. Well, hell, she shouldn't be. She shouldn't be the one in charge. Because the Vatican took her ass out. But hey, once the power gets to your head. And once there's corruption and once there's all this money involved, you can't take the truth. That's why every time the Sith or maybe they change their name again and again. But every time I remember after all this event started happening and all this division, you know, I have mad respect for the oath and the limb. Because like I said, if you want like uh, to go home, uh, you have that freedom. If you want to uh, call your family, you have that freedom. If you want counseling, not from the group, but from an outsider, you have that freedom. But, you know, with the Sith, it was very manip. From what I'm seeing, it's very, man even, and from my experience, it was very manipulative. And so now my question is, why is it that you know these you know some of these institutes follow the Vatican, like like uh, the oath and the limb, uh, the CPH and the Smith? Why is it that they did? But and I'm not sure with the cough. I'm not sure what their stance is. But for the Sith, why is it that the sisters were afraid to to leave Agnes? And why is it? So, so I left in 2015 and maybe in 2016 or 2017, my, my parents, they got a, uh, something in the mail and it was like, please send your money. Uh, well, it, it was a Christmas CD and it was, instead of saying Sith, they called themselves at that time, the sisters of the two hearts in Alabama, because, at that time, they were having the, they were having the division, where Agnes Frias was taken out, and they put three persons in charge. And from my understanding, uh, the the way this this is how they play the rules, is they bend the rules, they break the rules. So when I saw the CD, it says "Sister of the Two Hearts." So putting myself in their mentality, because that's the mentality I was trained in. The mentality is, well, 
the Sith are, you know, under the Vatican, supposedly. So we're going to give it a new name. We're going to call we're going to call it the Sisters of the Two Hearts. So when people give money, we we don't have to give it to the sisters who are trying to be faithful. We're going to give it to Agnes. Who was in in the U.S. It's very corrupt. And they call themselves Catholic. Give me a break. You call yourselves Christians. You wear the veil. Give me a break. No way, man. And then you have the oath who and the limb who are trying to break away from that cult history that they have. So heck yeah, I'm going to have mad respect for that. For the Sith, Agnes, like I said, you shouldn't be there. You should be more uh, transparent. Why the hell are you going to wear the nun veil and say, hey, yeah, we're sisters in the Catholic Church. And then you you falsify the name. You make all these new names and say, hey, give money to the Sisters of the Two Hearts. And then for last Christmas, uh, just 2022, I saw that they posted this thing called uh, the Affy Secretariat. Give me a break. Just call yourselves, call yourselves Agnes and Bing. I don't know, but don't lie. Don't change things. Don't confuse people. Stop doing that. We see, I see through your lies. I see through your deception. And it's time that the people who are around you all start waking up to and seeing all of this, of this deception. So Agnes Frias and Father Bing, I feel that Father Bing is like, uh, he's the, the face. He is the speaker. And Agnes Frias, I see her as the bully I see her. Why Why do I say that? Because she bullied me. <laughs> it's not no hearsay. She bullied me. Okay, And I've seen how Sith sisters, when I would go to their house to serve as a brother, I would see how they would bully each other and make other sisters cry. And there was all this fear. And so I witnessed that when I would go to their house in De in Dover, Delaware, to be the server for mass. You know, while waiting, I would hear them, the superiors, yelling at the younger members, and making the younger members cry, many times. So, what is the name of the group? I don't know, because they always change their names. But I'm going to define it as. The Bing Bingism. I don't know. The the Bing cult. Bingist. I don't know. Bing. That sounds kind of weird. Bingist. Uh, Bingism. The Bingers. The Bingers. <laughs> I don't know. It's not a laughing. It's not a laughing matter because, um, you know, people really are suffering and they really are under. I believe they they are very much under duress. And I really, really think that an investigation should be conducted on the Sith, on the AFI Secretariat. Um, I'm using air quotes here, AFI Secretariat, because what the AFI Secretariat pretty much is the Sith. So just they should just call it the Sith Sisters. Um, but anyways, I'm going to end it there because it's been so difficult for me to really give this cult movement a name and to really you know show it for what it is however no one else is doing it and i think it's necessary because why tolerate deceit why tolerate manipulation let's have true conversations but please no more deceit father bing father francis Father Jose, Agnes Frias, if you're listening, please change your ways. Please, if you're keeping members there, if you're recruiting members and you know causing duress, causing all this paranoia, please, or you know, sleep deprivation, you know, chill out. Please give them that freedom. 
stop torturing the members the way I was tortured through sleep deprivation, uh, isolation, solitary confinement. If it's happened to me and I've never received justice, not even a true apology, all I want is a true apology, public apology, and that they stop their ways and that there's no more, I believe that there should be no more uh, uh, concealing the truth. No more deception. Let it all out. Stop hiding. So I'm going to end it there for today. But if you really like this episode, please give it a like. Please share it. And let's continue the discussion of what should the name of Father Bing's movement, what should it be of, of the cult side of it. But for now, I'm going to call it Bingism. I don't I don't know any other name to put it, but I think that I think that's what it is. It's it's the Bing the Bing cult movement. There you go. So hopefully they can prove me wrong by being open, transparent. But from my personal experiences of suffering there and of being tortured, um it's a cult. And I'm happy that the oath, the limb, the CPH, the Smith have freed themselves from that. And I say, way to go, you guys. I am I support you, the oath and the limb. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not with y'all anymore, but I respect what you're doing of trying, of, you know, trying to find healing and no longer silencing members. But that only started... When the Vatican came in and got rid of Father Bing and got rid of the superiors that he put there. So you see, when you have Father Bing involved and his most loyal uh, followers, Kalti, once you remove that, it's a religious religious group just trying to just trying to pray, just trying to love God. And so thank you for listening. And until next time, I'm the host of the podcast, The Truth That Heals, Ryan Anthony Hernandez. And you can find me on Twitter, uh, Truth That Heals Podcast, I think is my name there. And find me on Instagram, The Truth That Heals Podcast. I wish you all the best. Peace out, y'all.